Okay, so this is just a, a quick couple comments on the settlement monitoring. So, the, and the question was asked about the very last question of the quiz, which is, um, how do you update the actual CCC? So, I just want to step back so we're all starting from the same place. Um, so, um, <clears throat> the yellow again. The, if we started from the uh, information we had in the laboratory. And we had a C sub C, uh, we calculated a C sub B from our lab data and we predicted this yellow curve. But then when we go to the field and we've installed our, um, our measurement uh, devices, uh, we find that uh, long before we're going to get to the end of consolidation, we got different behavior. And so the question is what's going on? And then we showed that depending on what assumptions you make, you could get, um, you could get either one of these two other settlement curves shown here. Um, so now I want to jump ahead to where we actually do the solution. Um, so this is the actual situation. Um, this is the compressible layer here, and we put our piezometer there. By the way, why do we put our piezometer there? Why don't we put our piezometer, for instance, right in the middle of the clay layer? I think the longest uh, dissipate at the middle. Right. So at the middle is. A, um, if we look at our isochrones, right, here's where the middle is. So for a significant, I'm, I'm not going to get very much pore pressure change there over time. So what I want to do is I want to pick a place where I get a, a, a significant amount of pore pressure dissipation over time, but not too much. And, and, and we don't want to put it at the top because at the top we're not going to learn anything because the pore pressure is always zero there. So when you do this, you want to pick a place, someplace in this area, where you're going to get a, a lot of pore pressure change with time, but not too much. So, but, we, but if we pick it at the top, it, it's going to be a long time before we get any pore pressure change. We want a place where it's changing rapidly enough that we can get a better estimate of the pore pressure. Um, that's the case for uh, single drainage also? Well, for single drainage, this is our solution, right? So then we don't want to put it at the bottom because, because we're, going to, you know, we're not going to measure much pore pressure change for a long time. We don't want to put it at the top because it's going to go to zero right away and about halfway in between is, is right. So, so you know, and I wouldn't say it has to be halfway in between, but in the middle third there, I'd say. So, so, so you got you to understand the drainage conditions. So that was, that was one of the questions, right? Okay. So, uh, so this is the situation. Whoops. Um, this is the situation. Here's where we're measuring the pore pressure. And we have this pore pressure measurement over time. So if you want to think about it, we really have two unknowns here. We don't know what C sub C is and we don't know what C sub V is. Right? So we, we, we've, got to, we've got to do two things. So what we're going to, but we have, we have two different measurements. What, what are the two data points we have at 1,000 days? We've got the excess pore pressure and we got the settlement. Right? And, and so the initial thing we did here was we calculated the degree of consolidation at that point, right? Remember we had the discussion about the difference between the average degree of consolidation and the degree of consolidation at the point? So this one, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna calculate the degree of consolidation at that point, and then we're gonna use that information, that's what we're doing right here, right? To come into the chart, let me erase the stuff on this chart. Um, we're gonna use that information to come into this chart at the degree of consolidation at the place where the pore pressure is measured, I'm sorry, the, the, the relative depth and the degree of consolidation, and then we're going to know the time factor from there. Or you can do it numerically and get a better estimate. You can, you can actually use the, the series solution and get a better solution. But, but that's what we're doing. We're using the information of the average degree of consolidation at the point. So we do that, and, and I went on to show that how you can back calculate CV from that information. Um, and then when we do that CV, now, now the question is, what's the other piece of information I can use to get C sub C? Well, the piece of information I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm using to get C that I haven't used yet is that this is the settlement. This is the total settlement, right? So now what I want to do is determine what U average gives me, uh, what's that going to be, 220, uh, was it? 290 millimeters, I think that's right. 290, 290 millimeters of settlement with the new CV that's uh, equal to, 
um, 0.0043, right? Meters squared per day. So I'm going to use that information then to go back and calculate C sub C. Does that make sense? So in other words, I need to use, let's see, I don't know if, that, if I have that figure in here. I might have to go back to another. Yeah. Whoops. So I'm going to use, so I'm going to say that U average is going to be equal to 290 um, millimeters divided by my, my uh, total settlement, sorry, right? I know what time, I, I, I know what the time factor is now because that's a function of C sub C, right? So I'm going to come in here at whatever the time factor, and I forget what the time factor is at that time, and I'm going to come out and calculate uh, my U average. I don't want it to be the same as the C. I had 68% uh, consolidation at the top, right, at that point. So this one's got to be um, less than 68. So we, you're going to figure out whatever your time factor is based on your new CV. Then you're going to come in here and you're going to compute U average, right? And then you got to figure out, and, and then from that, you're going to get what total settlement you need. It's going to be equal to 290 millimeters divided by U average. And now what you got to do is calculate a C sub C that gives you that total settlement. Does that make sense? So that's how you calculate C sub C. If you want to think of it in, in just kind of simple terms, um, what I did um, what I did to calculate um, whoops, um, I calculated um, I calculated C, C sub C that got me to this point, and then I, but, but I didn't, that got me to this time, but I didn't use the information about the settlement at that point. So now what I want to do is ensure that the settlement at that point is that, that, that I, I, I get a C sub C that's going to give me that, that that settlement at the point is going to correspond to the average degree of consolidation at that time. Does that make sense or not? I don't want to go through the numbers, but the concept's pretty straightforward. Okay? Does this only work if it's normally consolidated? Uh, no, it would work if it's over. Well, if it's over consolidated, you have, you have three unknowns now. You have, you, have, you have now four unknowns, if you want to think of it. You have C sub R, C sub C, and sigma prime C. So you'd have to make some reasonable assumptions about some of those to do it. Yeah. I guess that's correct. Because we're, 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 we're just looking for C sub C and C sub V. Um, so yeah, I guess that's correct. Because you got theoretically two more unknowns, so you'd have to, add, you know, I guess if you had two different, two other pore pressure measurements, would that work? I have to think about that. Not sure. We just had a consult pass. Yeah. Um, okay. So any other questions about? Um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do.